In this episode, we discuss street and off-road performance and cylinder head porting. Well, let's talk about uh, let's talk about high performance on the street and off-road. It sounds like you built some engines um, and yeah. some you know street cars. Can you maybe talk a little bit about you know what you built and uh, sort of what okay. you did with them to begin with? Well, okay, have, we'll start with that uh, pickup truck, ninety-two okay. Jeep pickup truck with a four-liter stocker. Stock. Not the race no. stuff. Street performance. Oh, stuff. speeders. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe I put right. a, a four, four was a four point six liter two two fifty eight crank and a four liter block. I built one for myself. Oh. oh, you had a stroker. Okay. I had a stroker and then I had a stroker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a stroke. But anyway, uh, I built that Jeep a pickup. I had a Comanche pickup. And I built a stroker for it. Was like way two fifty eight. Uh, what kind of performance did you see out of it? It was faster than crap. I can tell you that. Oh, it was fast. It was it was it was a streeter. It was for street. Mm-hmm. But boy, I could fry those tires like. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I whittled out a little cylinder head for it, and I did a little tweak in here and there on the manifold. But I tried to keep it stock as possible, but I still did the cleanup work inside. All right. Yeah. The real question for this section is: if you're gonna, you know, build a. Uh, street performance motor, what are the little tweaks that you would do, knowing everything you know? The first thing I would do is, you know, I didn't use the 92 cylinder head because this was still in the 80s when I did this. You know, I used like uh, the head right off the truck. It had the big eyebrow on the uh, intake port. It had a notch yeah. in there for the intake, the, for the uh, injector. And How's the thing the, the one yeah, I did, from, I don't remember offhand, but I, I I know it was about 250. It made pretty decent power, you said, so it must be something decent. Yeah, power. you know, it was it's flat floor, and that's not good. That flat floor mm-hmm. just puts more timing in the engine. You don't want the no, flat floor. You want the raised floor. You want a raised floor. You, you can't buy a raised floor four-liter head, There's, you know, unless it's aftermarket. Maybe they raise the floor, but that's the secret to making it flow is to raise that mm-hmm. floor because you kind of equalize the velocity going around the corner. you got that short little floor, and then the valve opens, and the fuel just shoots right across, right up the port uh, opening there and into the mm-hmm. chamber wall. So you don't want that. Right. You want a higher floor so that you can control the fuel better and force it to re-energize into the airstream. The major airstream is on the floor. The major airstream comes into the port from the roof, like midsection of the port to the roof. That's high velocity air. As it gets down to the valve, it all of a sudden takes a shortcut on the valve because the air is lighter. So it just wants to go around that short side. So that's where you do a lot of your work to get the flow is on the short side because that's where the air ends up transitioning around. And then the fuel has heavier, it has more weight, so it's heavier, and it just flies out of the fuel that's like it's supposed to be, you know, combined to a homogeneous mixture so that it's like air and fuel ratio is like, yeah, yeah it's, it's consistent. So, but the fuel is heavier, so it wants to, it wants to leave the air when it turns the corner and shoot off to the back wall of the port. So you got fuel wanting to come in from the back side of the port. And the air coming in on the other side of the port. What's that going to lead to? It's going to lead to a mixture in the combustion chamber that's kind of hit and miss. You'll have a stratified charge. It's a, just a good stratified charge. That's perfect language for it. So a guy, if a guy was going to do it, you'd say work on the short side radius on the intake. If you, you um, know, if I was going to do it, I would take a, like a little like if you don't have any like little tools that you could like a dremel a little tiny dremel with a little stone and just kind of knock off knock off the machining edge just knock that off just write that little tiny bit of taking that machining edge off the short side for mm-hmm. will increase the flow a lot really okay and yeah. nothing else to just do in the bowl it, or maybe shrink down you the, you can go in there and just clean up everything and around the valve guide, you can clean it up. But that short side radius is the high flow area. That's a sensitive area. You, but you don't want to put a flat in there. You know, don't be going, eh, oops. You just go in no. there and just kind of lightly dust across there to try to keep that rounded shape. You want a radius. I got and that you. radius okay. starts in the middle of the port. Radius has started already in the middle of the port. You don't notice it. But if you look down the floor, on a newer head, like a, a like a ninety two head, if you looked at it, you'd say, "Hey, yeah, there is a radius start. That radius is wow. important." It goes all the way to the middle of the port. Yeah, hmm. it goes 
almost to the opening. That's critical to make the, get a little more high lift flow out of it. Because that floor is that floor is so short when it, where it turns the corner. You got a All big right, velocity sure. difference there between the flow going around the short side and the fuel has to go along the long side. There's still air going along, but the velocity is different on the long side. Gotcha. It just wants a short circuit. It just wants to go right across. That's why I built up a head that had a higher floor. And So then what about once we get past that valve and we're into the combustion chamber? I like the combustion chambers because it looks like... Uh, I, do you remember Larry Widmar? Yeah, he used, sounds very familiar. Yeah, he, um, he was one of the first guys that started building swirl flow uh, combustion okay. chambers and ports. So, you know, the, the uh, combustion chamber. That's what I've heard that. Yeah. The swirl, so the the swirl stuff, swirl port and swirl chamber. So I love the 4-liter because it's actually, I mean, you've got the beginnings of the same design that he uses, which is you yeah. know, you're really coming out of yeah. that intake port, laying the port wall back so that the air can transition and start moving around the cylinder itself. So what would you suggest guys do once they get past the valve? We did experiment with uh, what we call a shelf combustion chamber. We cast them in there okay. and the shelf is the, it's like an extension of the deck, okay? It goes up to the valve and then you cast a radius in there. And the distance between the head of the valve to that shelf, like it could be 60 thou, it could be 100 thou, it could be 120, it could be two tenths, it all, all depends. And it could be on an angle. A real good representation of that is in the newer Jeep engine. It's the 47. If you look at a 47 combustion chamber, you'll see that swirl shelf in there. That mm -hmm. swirl shelf was a uh, son of a gun because you, you're trying to maximize swirl at a very low lift. You want to start right. the swirl up to about 300, then you want it to stop swirling. Then you want it to start flowing. And uh, on the 47, it was, it was pretty straight. It was just like a machine cut on that shelf. Well, so back to the combustion chamber on the 4 liter. Sorry, <clears throat> sorry, I got off on the track. No, no, that's fine. So it, uh, the combustion chamber in the 4-liter, is there anything, you know, for sort of a street performance motor that you would suggest that a guy does inside the combustion chamber? Okay, yeah, on a 4-liter combustion chamber, you don't need to do much of anything. You could clean it up with a little Tootsie Roll, just polish it out a little bit. The valve job okay. is probably the most critical part. You know, you might want to address the valve job. 30, 30, 45, 60, 75 is uh, really good in angles and uh, you know and bring the valve job out to the edge of the valve the valve head if you take the valve job and you bring it out to the edge of the valve and then you lap it with some lapping compound so you can see a witness line going around the valve if you've got like ten or thousands of the valve if the the original valve material where you can see it, the valve and it's you know on the and then you go onto the seat and then in the bottom you back cut the valve was well, like a 30 degree angle. Right. Cut 45 it. seat and back cut the valve right up to that witness line. So send when, you, when you lap it, you lap it, you wit, you witness it. And if you got a little, just a little hair line, you know, on the outside of the valve, so it's not, that part is not hitting the seat. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's just a little sliver of a line, like 10 thou. And then you have a, uh, like a 50 thou wide seat, 45 degree angle, 50 thou wide. You know, 50 is good. 60, I would say 60 is better. Mm, okay. You can get a lot more low lift flow with 60, and that for a production engine would be better. Then I would use a, uh, you know, like a 30 to bring in the seat to the OD of the valve or just slightly less, and then use a uh, 45 degree seat with a 30 top. Make the seat like 50 to 60. I don't know, 55 would be good. Just kind of aim for 55 and the width, mm -hmm. and then go to a 60, and they make that one about 85 wide. Just measure it right down on the, on the same angle. Just measure it, and if it's 85, you're there. Right. It could be a little wider. You know, it'll handle 90, but, you know, 85 is kind of like the, is the optimal for torque and horsepower. And then you go underneath that, under the, the 75 with a 90. I was mm -hmm. using the 88 and a half because for production, they needed an 88 and a half. But if you're going to be doing a streeter, you don't even need to blend, you know, the uh, the 75 right into whatever you whatever you got there. You know, it's an 88, just blend it into that. If you know, if it's got any machining, just knock it off with a little tootsie roll or something. Now, mm -hmm. give you the perfect valve job, and it'll flow real well. If you have a little tootsie roll work on the short side, and a little tootsie roll work around the port, and you know, on the machining and uh, around the valve guide, you're all set. Mm -hmm. 
same thing on the exhaust uh, same, port? Yeah, same. Yeah, basic same thing. Uh, just clean up the short side. The exhaust port is like the early heads. The exhaust port was made with like a cutout on the back. The wall is cut, the long wall. Mm-hmm. It's got a, like an indentation in there. You don't want to use, ever use one of those heads. You want to use the one that where you, the machining goes right that on, right down to the valve guide, where you can see a yeah, machining yeah. witness line going right to the valve guide. If it's like if cleaning it off, but it's just skimming it, that's okay. That'll work fine. That'll, uh, I, I recommend that one the best. It's got to be straight. It can't be cut undercut. You can undercut that, you're going to cause all kinds of turbulence on the exhaust port, and it's going to lose performance. And that's the early head. So that's like what I worked with when I did that stroker motor. I used the early head, and I knew the problem was there, but I just said, screw it, I'm going to use it anyway. <laughs> well, describe a little bit more about what undercutting is. So, you know, guys can make sure that they don't do it. When you undercut that wall, the opposite of the short side radius, that wall mm-hmm. has to be on a certain angle. I don't know what the angle is because I don't remember. Right. You know, the angle is already cut in there. It's mm-hmm. machined in there. If the casting goes in, you know, you look at it and it's still a casting where the machine cutter went right down in there. And you could mm-hmm. see them. If the wall was right, it would just machine would clip it. You could see it clipping right. it all the way down. Some of it's a little heavy, some it's a little light, but you can still see it. If that's not there, if it's undercut where it's casting there, you don't want it. You don't want to use that one because that one won't oh. work as well. So the bowl's going to be wider. It's going to be wider right underneath the uh, head. Yeah, you're going to see just uh, like a divot in the back wall or a long radius or whatever you want to call it, opposite right. of the short side radius. Short side radius on the exhaust is critical, and so is the long wall. Both of them gotcha. have to be right. So leave that exhaust, can, the, uh, the long side on the exhaust, you want to leave it straight. You don't want to undercut that. It's going to be on an angle. It's going to be straight in right to the valve guide, though. You know, it's, you'll see a machining witness line going right across there. It's just like when the machine's cutter, cutter's cutting it, it's just going to mm-hmm. go right across that, and you, just, you could blend that in a little if you want but just don't uh, grind into it and make it deeper. Sure. You can just clean up, you know, if it's got a little, like a machining curve to it, you just like blend in the curve on each side of it, and that's it. Gotcha. Don't worry about it. You're, you're good to go. Anything you guys should do on the uh, intake manifold or the exhaust manifold? Production? Port match? Well, no, I wouldn't even bother. I wouldn't even bother with port matching. Really? It makes no difference. No, nah, it makes no difference. If it was a racing yeah. application, I'd say, yeah, you want the port to match up good. But the production, uh, they, I went through that with some of these guys in engineering, and they were driving me nuts. Well, it's because the surface has been textured with your grinders and stuff. And I said, that has very little to do with anything. So they start casting heads, and they go, gee, it flows the same as your model. <laughs> I said, yes. I said, I did that intentionally so you wouldn't be, you know, belly aching about it. But the big thing was that... Uh, you know, if you can smooth it out, it's, it won't hurt anything. It just makes the boundary layer thinner. The boundary layer is like a dead space. You know, it looks like un- almost like the port's smaller. So let's and, talk uh, a little bit about the boundary layer so you guys understand what it is. Boundary layer is really okay. where the air is sticking to it's the wall. Dead. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah. It's dead air. It's not moving. It's not really, yeah, it's not doing anything. It's just kind of hanging there, and uh, even the flow that's going by it, if, if the flow that's going by the boundary layer, okay, the dead space, you know, mm-hmm. that dead space can be different thicknesses depending on how rough the casting is. The rougher mm-hmm. the casting, the thicker that, that boundary layer gets. So it makes the port essentially smaller. Right. The air that's rushing by the boundary layer, if the velocity of that air reaches a point like uh, four or 500 feet per second, which is really moving, if that would, right. you know, determine whether the port was too small or too big or the valve was too small or too big, you get a real high velocity going through there, it'll actually pull that boundary layer right out. It'll pull it right off. And when it does, it causes so much turbulence, you couldn't put a turbo on that thing and run it. It just wouldn't perform very well. So if you start pulling the boundary layer off because your velocity is too high, there's a lot less, lot less air to be pulled. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. And then on the short side, if you can polish the snot out of the short side, the short side radius, if you could polish it like you were polishing your shoes to make them shine, mm-hmm. that'll that'll cut down on the boundary layer of the air going around the corner. Actually, a real smooth, nice radius, really smooth around the corner, 
to use like 120 grit sandpaper on that in a Tootsie Roll form. I just go along there and buff it. 120 is really fine. So, I mean, you can get a pretty nice sheen on the, with 120. 80 was the normal grit that I would use on a port. But I'd use it on the floor of the port until it got to the turn, and I'd polish the snot out of the turn. The reason why I'd use rough grit on the floor, I, I looked at a NASCAR engine that was running. It, it had fiber optics in it and, and light. You could see what was going on while the engine was running. It was about a 7 to 500 RPM range, and I was watching the fuel coming out of the carburetor and going right down to the floor. And it was like... Some of the fuel would go down the runner. You could see it vaporizing and going down the runner, but the majority of it went right to the floor. It was a four-barrel tarantula-type manifold, NASCAR. Right. The fuel just pooled in the floor, and it was always there. It, it would pull fuel down the runners, cylinder would fill, and you'd see the fuel just take off down the runner. And you'd look and think, well, it pulled all that fuel off the floor. You'd look at the floor, and it was still the same. Never changed. It was always a pool of fuel laying on the floor, <laughs> no matter what valve was opening and sucking fuel. And you could see the fuel disappear, and then you'd say, well, how can that pool still be there? It's like it's playing tricks on your eyes, you know, and this was slow motion. Right. And it was still doing it. The pool of fuel was just sitting there glistening away, and then psh, mm -hmm. gone, 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 and majority of the fuel's on the floor. So if you go in there with a Tootsie Roll and keep the floor a little on the rough side, it's going to help suspend it back up into the air. Is, so, is that important to do with uh, with an injected motor, too, when you're that close to the uh, back? No, not so much. An injected motor, you can get away with a lot of polish. You can polish a lot more of the port. I mean, it's real smooth it because real smooth. you're just moving the air. You know, it doesn't really make much difference until you get to where the valve is. And then you need a, like a uh, swirl polished valve where it's a, like it's like textured. The valve's textured, so when the fuel hits it, it helps rip it. it when the air hits it, it'll rip it off that valve. sharp edge. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to polish the backside of the intake valve. No, you can polish the backside of the exhaust. It ain't gonna hurt anything. You can polish the front part of the valve. It, it, it won't hurt on either or. You know, it might help the flame speed. In the next episode, we'll delve deeper into performance modifications for the four liter.